you let me see something. Let me, let me see something here. Sir, the first job. Uh, let's see what that is. First John, fourth chapter. First John, the fourth chapter. There's a, I mean, even, you know, it, it addresses this issue in First John. When you get it, say, I'll say. Notice what it says. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try or test the spirits. What? Whether they are of God, right? Why? Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Now, see, one of the things that we miss, and we get hung up in our misconceptions today, is again, we read this and, and think it's talking about the year 2000. Alright? We must go back to the time of the writer who is doing the speaking here. Back at this time, the writer is saying that there are a lot of false prophets or a lot of false teachers that have gone out into the world. And it goes on to say, second verse, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Now notice what it says. Every spirit that what? Confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the what? And the flesh is of God. Y'all see that? Okay. And then it goes on to say, in third verse, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, but this is the spirit of Antichrist. Now let's look at that very closely. Let me show you how we have been made to think as opposed to what's there. It says plainly, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now what does that mean, come in the flesh? What does it mean? What does it mean, come in the flesh? <laughs> but, see, our, doctor, our indoctrination tries to instill what is called the doctrine of the incarnation. Write that down. I-N-C-A-R-N-A-T-I-O-N. Write that down. Write it down. Okay? We're not talking incarnation here. That's not... That's not the context of this verse. In fact, the context of the verse is to address a false teaching that's been going around. And that is that Jesus is God come in human form. Look at the person next to you say, God has never come in human form. Please understand that. Now, all of us in here are humans, right? Are y'all human, I hope. Right? Do y'all have God in you? All right, so I don't mean in that context. Okay, every last one of us in here who has the Spirit of God in us is God's messenger. Or, you follow what I'm saying? But I'm talking about people who literally say that God left heaven and clothed himself in human flesh. That's called incarnation. And this is the passage that's used to support that. And that is not what this passage says in the Greek. Let me give you the proper transliteration. Second verse. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is a mere human being. Don't take my word for it. Go verify it. Please go verify it. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is a mere human being, that's what the phrase here means, come in the flesh. What? I mean, if it meant what we thought it meant, then it would say every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is God. I mean, it's, it's common sense. He's in flesh. You're looking at him. Please understand this. It's of God. And it goes on to say in third verse, and every spirit that confesses not. In other words, every spirit that does not 
confess that Jesus Christ is a mere human being is not of God. Why did the writer write this? Because people started teaching that Jesus was more than a human being. Okay? And of course, why? Because that is the concept of Rome. That's what Europeans do, people. Europeans deify stuff. Europeans deify people. They make altars and statues for gods. All right? Now, let's prove what I'm saying. Turn to Isaiah right quick. See, I know what I'm, I know what I'm dealing with here. I got to, I got to be, as, as, as my brother Ashraf Kwesi says, he says, I got to be strong with this brother and sister because I know what I'm dealing with. But I know what I'm up against. I'm up against our indoctrination. Turn to Isaiah. Let's see what Isaiah has to say about this. Who else is God besides God? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Y'all sure? Let's see what he says. There are some passages here. Uh, Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Okay, turn to Isaiah. Um, it's 43. Isaiah 43 and 10. You have to say I'll shake. Notice what it says. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me. Check this out now. And understand that I am he. Read it with me. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Let's continue to read. Seven verse. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. Do y'all see it there? Now Rome doesn't agree with that. And unfortunately, people, we are the grandchildren of Rome, or the Roman Church. The Protestant Church came out of the Roman Church. It's important to understand that. Besides me, there is no Savior. Do y'all see that? All right? Uh, let's see. Look at the 44th chapter. That's chapter 44th chapter. Six verse. What does it say? Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me, what? Read the eighth verse. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. But that's not good enough for Rome. Rome had to make another God besides the one who's speaking here. And make him equal with the God who's speaking here. Did I finish page one? Okay, page two. When all was said and done, talk about the Council of Nicaea, the Council, as commanded by Constantine, did what, people? Rejected whose position? Now, mind you, again, Arius' argument was that Jesus is not God. Okay? They rejected Arius' position and adopted or wrote and adopted what is known today as the Nicene Creed. Let's read that creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten of His Father, of the substance of the Father, God of God, light of light, very God of very God.